from the deepest, darkest recesses of Dangerous Nerds headquarters, Keith Moncrief and Gary Cassell. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Pop Culture Minefield. That's Keith. And that's Gary. And I'm not here to do much talking. I just got my hair cut and I'm just like wanting to chill. And Keith is like, we need to do an episode. And I'm like, all right. So um, I left my glasses. So he has to do all of the reading. But uh, the big news is, number one, we've got a new... It's a Mikey Sutton News Alert. Fresh. Yeah, there you go, Mikey Sutton. Uh, and uh, and because this is a scoop, no matter how confirmed those scoops are, just remember that pop culture minefield, when it's discussing rumors, are just rumors. You have to take them with a grain of salt. Yeah, so, yeah, there you go. Hey, Lois, what do you got this? Oh, you're Keith. <laughs> I can't be well. Today. Well, this is what this is what Mikey has set up. So let's let's just get right into it. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and throw uh, a graphic. Okay. Oh, baby, boom! There we go. Superman is not dead. Okay. Uh, basically, it's the same source who had provided him with information providing this about the Snyder cut. And when he said his, uh, he's referring to Mikey Sutton. That's right. Uh, uh, was happening on HBO Max in November. And the Henry Cavill would return, uh, which he was provided that information back in March, has dropped more info on Mikey that should please all fans of the DCEU, okay? Now, he was told that uh, speculation uh, floating around that Man of Steel 2 not happening is in error, okay? There is a growing interest at AT AT&T of Man of Steel sequel, okay? So basically, there are still elements at Warner Brothers and a few elements within DC Entertainment that are wanting to push everything out to the side related to the DCEU and Zack Snyder. And at and coming in and basically saying, uh, that's not happening. We, we have a different idea. And they're willing to spend money on uh, Snyder's version of Justice League to prove that they are solidly behind this. And now they're wanting to consider building on top of all of that. Okay? So that means this is, you know, this hinges a lot on, on The Rock, which is why we've got a Rock graphic. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to get to. I'm going to get to that. Okay? Uh, let's see. Uh, they, uh, at and uh, they see the Snyder cut as an explosive promotional vehicle for man of steel two and any other projects moving forward. Uh, at this point, there have been no discussions with Zack Snyder about helming man of steel two. Uh, but he is expected to be approached, uh, AT and T has strong faith in the Snyder Cut, which again is much different than what those at Warner Brothers and DC Entertainment are saying. Uh, and and it doesn't matter what they say because AT and T owns all of it. Um, yeah, and you and I have talked but, about this uh, ad nauseum in the past that yeah. AT and T is a company; they are yeah. not an entertainment company they're a corporation that deals mm-hmm. with communication and we we said right up front that they're not going to put up with a lot of crap that has been going on at dc warner and yeah mainly at warner because warner treats everything the same way dc's just a, a part of warner and s rolls downhill basically right. um s big shit <laughs> Or Superman. Stuff. Stuff rolls downhill. That S means hope, by the way. <laughs> anyway, um, AT&T have strong faith that the Snatter Cut will live up to the hype and that the social media response from the fans has them thrilled. Now, remember, as you said, AT&T 
they're a communications company, a media company, not necessarily an entertainment communications and media company, but they've gotten into that now. And uh, I don't know if you or a lot of people out there are customers of AT&T. I was. They backed Justice League to the hilt. When that movie hit, they were part of the whole thing about promoting that film. All the AT&T stores were covered in this stuff. AT&T is basically just still in love and infatuated with all this stuff. And this, so this is nothing different. Right after the, the word came out that Zach had showed a cut to mm-hmm. executives. And immediately after that, well. <sighs> Boy, that escalated quickly. Yeah, baby. I I think a lot of those executives that were truly impressed were AT&T executives. And that it's looking more and more like people like Toby Emmerich were... It wasn't really his idea to call up Zach because it basically makes him look like he had his tail between his legs. But basically... That this is really a sign... That Jeff Johnson and, and Toby Emmerich, uh, their careers are very, very. Uh, um, they've got a short fuse, on on. The- well, that that's the reason why Jeff Johns is no longer employed uh, officially as a producer for any of the DC yeah, entertainment it's stuff. His production he, company. But yes, I, it's just his production company. I think we're going to see um, a tightening of the uh, screws from AT and T on all. Oh, well, that-, that is even going to impact. Uh, Berlanti's Entertainment. Well, yeah. Don't jump ahead. I'm, get, I'm getting to that part. I'm getting to it. I'm, okay, I'm everybody out there. I'm excited. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, uh, uh, AT&T, uh, uh, they've noticed the social media response from the fans has them thrilled about how they can expand the franchise regarding J.J. Abrams and Superman. Uh, that is up in the air, so to speak, okay? What they mainly wanted from Abrams is to provide content for HBO Max, which is something I heard around the time that this deal became official, that content for HBO Max was the paramount reason why they went out and got Abrams, Yeah. okay? And his focus is realizing his own IPs, and that seems to be the focus for a lot of people right now, uh, in corporate entertainment, and uh, uh, also in in uh, 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 also with other actors and other people, IP is the current currency. Okay, creating franchises and everything related to that, and it's it's safe to say that Dwayne Johnson is currently probably the biggest star in Hollywood, but he's not young. He's not getting any younger. So what you want to do is you want to be able to have something to build upon. And it seems like uh, just like with how we had talked about Idris Elba and all those rumors about him being James Bond, it's the same thing. You got to seriously look at who you are, where you are, how old you are, and how much longer you can continue to do things. And you are going to want uh, as much money as you can get. Preferably owning something either original or owning an entire IP to be able to do whatever you want with. Tom Cruise was the first to do it because that's what Mission Impossible was. It was a previously created IP that he just went and got the rights to. And that's the reason why he continues to make all of the Mission Impossible films. Um, So uh, let's just jump further down this and just go in with... uh, Uh, Abrams wants to focus on his own IPs. Now, he will do DC projects such as Justice League Dark, but AT&T is mainly expecting cutting-edge TV shows such as Lost. Which is really where they they should isolate him at doing. Well, they're they're not. All that money they paid him basically is going to allow him to wander wherever he wants, but both he and, and and uh, the people behind HBO Max are pretty much trying to focus on something a little more original. That doesn't mean he won't occasionally do something outside of that. Um, but they they basically want him to create more shows like Lost, 
fringe and other things. Uh, they want to be able to uh, create. They want him to create programming that can generate critical yeah, acclaim like and massive movie, buzz. Um, um, Castle Rock. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's that's basically yeah, uh, what they want to build on. So are you Abrams? Is, you know, is is it coming down to the fact that because um, you and I have talked about it before that the Rock really should be in a position of not just a star but an executive uh, producer on things. Uh, he's basically, I think, wanting, he wants the Robert Downey Jr. deal. Now, someone of the rock stature within Hollywood, he would be the easiest person to go out and sign up if he were to go to Disney and be a part of the MCU. But this is the thing that a lot of stars are starting to figure out. That Robert Downey Jr. deal was a one-time thing. And only, and the reason why it's called the Robert Downey Jr. deal is that basically because only Robert Downey Jr. got it. Okay, we, we're getting ready to go over. So, yeah, so let me, let me, let me finish up here. Okay. So, um, uh, Abrams will still direct movies. Uh, HBO Max will allow him to have his freedom to create stuff. Uh, his involvement with Superman theatrically will have to be under some sort of a compromise or perhaps no involvement at all, okay? The reception of the Snyder Cut will be where final decisions will be made. Right now, it's looking bright, especially with The Rock wanting to at least cameo in Man of Steel 2. If it goes forward, and probably will, your fly in the ornament, Mikey Sud. All right, man. That's good stuff. Uh, thanks again, Mikey. And um, again, that's Keith. Hey, hey, that's Gary. And this is Pop Culture Minefield, and we're just telling you, get off our lawns! Hey guys, thanks for watching Pop Culture Minefield. If you've enjoyed the show, please remember to like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon. Remember, you can find us at Pop Culture Minefield on both Facebook and Instagram. Thank you again.